All right, what's going on guys? It's your boy King Red Diamonds and I am back for another Neo 2 video. Today I'm showing off my axe slash hammer build. Um, this build took a while to put together. Um, a long time actually. I had to farm Underworld, uh, Depths of the Underworld a lot to get this set. I'm running the grace of Oyama Tsumi, which is the pretty much uh, tanking grace. As you can see, it has a lot of tanking capabilities. Uh, when I'm guarding, I get my key recovery speeds up plus 70%. Uh, damage taken is minus 8. Damage taken is half. When I'm unscathed, about 100%. Uh, 500 life, 30% extra life, and then another 14% melee damage. This is a very good set for uh, Deaths in the Underworld since enemies hit ridiculously hard. Um, whenever you're using the axe or the hammer, you want to make sure that you have a high toughness. You want to wear heavy armor. You don't want to wear light armor, medium armor, none of that. You want heavy armor when using an axe, okay? So make sure that you're working with heavy armor. Make sure you get the that you uh, get the, the the grace the graces on the pieces of armor that you want, but make sure they are heavy pieces of armor, okay? Um, I'm working with purity, of course, because purity. I feel like um, between purity and corruption, those two are the best to go with. Uh, you can choose either purity or corruption either one is really good but you want to go with either one of those um, using other elements like lightning water fire they're they're fine but in terms of um, usability in the depths and stuff you want to make sure that you're using purity or corruption purity and corruption pretty much deal increase key damage no matter who you're going up against regardless so make sure that you choose either purity or corruption either one I went with purity because since the hammer this hammer came with purity on it it had no other innate stats so I can just fill up all my special effects with stuff that I really need and, and that is really useful and stuff the um, corruption ones had other innate stats on it and stuff so I didn't want to go with that one I just went with purity instead um, I'm using like I said the seven piece Oyama Sumi I have the um, I have a four piece Susano uh, just to get take advantage of the damage taken and the key recovery speed uh, it's really good for our act for the axe because the axe uses up a lot of key for its move set so key recovery speed is really good and then damage taken is really good because like i said axe is very slow the movements and the attacks of axe is very very slow so um the damage taken will help me tank those hits and fight through any hits that i might take while doing combos and stuff like that um and then i'm also taking advantage of the three piece of shina, shina suhiko i think it's shina suhiko yep um, which gives me the faster moving on Amrita absorption, which is really good for the axe. Like I said again, it, it's a very slow moving weapon. So um, the faster movement speed will help me basically uh, be more maneuverable. Um, I'm in B agility, so that helps as well. But the faster keep the faster moving on keep uh, Amrita absorption is really is really really good. Um, as you can see, I'm working with 386 toughness, which I which puts me into the uh, range for. AA toughness. Um, I'll show you that in a sec, but I'll go through my gear. Shooting Doji Mask. Uh, I chose that because I like the increased attack on the rid absorption. It's really good. Um, it doesn't conflict with any other like attack boosts I might add up. So um, it's it, it helps pretty much stack on attack uh, buffs and all that stuff. It's really good. Um, and then other pieces of gear are pretty much just like randomized heavy pieces of gear. So. Um, I usually base off my builds from the helmet. Uh, when the helmet has really good rolls on it and it has like some some additional attack buffs for me or like whatever other buffs like status status buffs, I usually go with that helmet and then I worry about just randomizing my pieces of gear. But as you can see, I'm in all heavy gear. I made sure that I had gear that was heavy enough for me to be in uh, AA toughness and also you know to use with the axe. So it's pretty much a tank build. Um, but yeah, all the Oyama, Oyama, uh, Oyama Sumis and uh, Shino Suhikos um, and a Susano. So four piece Susano, seven piece Oyama Sumi, uh, and three piece Shino Suhiko. So uh, all in all, it comes out to be a very good build. Like it's it's not bad at all. Like it's very good. Um, I say that the main thing you want to focus on if you plan on making this build is the seven piece Oyama Sumi. You want to have the seven piece Oyama Sumi just because of what the axe is like it's a very tank heavy weapon like you want to be able to fight through hits and stuff like that so that's what i'm working with um yasakani of course for the set uh set bonus requirements minus one 
Uh, and I just had a fan because it came with a, a Yamasumi on it. So, um, and it has pretty good roles on it, actually. Like Melee versus Purify, Melee versus Zero Key. And it also has Auto Life Recovery and Auto Absorption. So, it's a really good roles on it. Uh, scroll of the Down I'm using is Ultimate Courage, Ultimate Stamina. Um, Ultimate Stamina is what allows me to get to double A Toughness. So, um, it's really, really good. Um, because the Hammer or Slash Axe, it scales with Stamina. Um, ultimate courage because the ultimate courage helps with key um key pretty much um reduces the amount of key i use when i'm attacking and stuff so it's really good it's not bad at all um i really like it path of the ravenous is very good as well um it greatly recovers my health whenever i absorb Murder, but in exchange i earn less in Murder, which is not a problem because of this right here extraction allows me to basically force Murder out of any enemy that i attack so that counteracts the path of the ravenous is um pretty much its negative effect so all in all it's pretty much works around each other and it, it, it's very um it synergizes very well um as for my magic same old magic as any of my other builds it's the most versatile magic you can go with in my opinion barrier for um the key recovery speed and the yokai pool um purifications rejuvenation of course to give me health regen steal for defense extraction like i said before is one of my most important magics um because of the path of the ravenous and because of um and because of um the shooting doji mask so basically the extraction is really going to help me out with this build um arch yokai is pretty much for the um anima gain so i can pretty much spam my uh yokai abilities Lightning Familiar, of course, just to put uh, lightning on the enemy, slow him down a little bit. Also put up the um, Confusion buff. And then uh, my standard Tiger Running Scrolls, my, not, my standard Ninjutsu Scrolls, sorry. And then uh, I have a Purification Talisman just to help me get Purity up a lot quicker on enemies. As for the Guardian Spirit, I am running Eno Sasao. Um, Eno Sasao is really good because it comes with a minus 15 damage taken mid attack. Meaning that whenever I'm attacking, the damage I take is reduced by 15%. With the axe build, that is very good. And I also get an anima bonus when I take damage. So all in all, it's a very good um, guardian spirit to run with the axe since the axe is mainly a tanking weapon. Um, as for my uh, soul cores, Kozuki, of course, Epon, of course. And this right here is going to help boost my damage even more. When I get more of him and I pretty much max out his soul core rank, that damage bonus equipment weight will go up to, I think, double A, meaning that I'm getting even more damage because of the equipment I have on. Basically, like it, it, it gives you a nice, a nice amount of uh, extra damage onto your um, onto your build, pretty much onto the to the to the hammer. So this is a really good soul core to have. Like I said, I'll pretty much I'll find some more where I can um, I find some place where I can farm up his soul core and just you know keep on uh, maxing it, getting into his maxes out. But um, that is the build pretty much. I'll go over the stats and stuff for you guys. But yeah, when you ever whenever you're making these builds, um, especially in Underworld, Dream of Neo, all that stuff, gear will always be randomized. You'll always randomize your gear, but you just want to try to put together the best pieces of gear that you can for you know. Um, the different situations that you'll come across. Um, let me go down. Stats. So stats. Constitution's at 200. Um, for nice amount of health. Plus my weapon scales with um, Constitution, as you can see. I have a dual remodel to scale with Constitution and Stamina. So Constitution and Stamina, as you can see, both um, A minuses. So they scale with that, making me do more damage. Uh, 200 Constitution. Uh, 140 heart just to give me a nice amount of key. I'm probably going to keep on putting stuff in the heart um, just to give me some more key. I'll probably cap it out at 150. Um, and courage at 150 to take advantage of ultimate courage. Uh, stamina is 200 because that's my weapon scales with. Um, and that also allows me to be in B agility. Uh, strength is at 13 right now. Um, I can put my strength up more. It'll actually lower my equipment weight, meaning that I'll be able to um, remodel my uh, gear. But at the moment, if I try to remodel my gear, that will put me in C agility, and that's not good to have with the axe since I'm already since the axe is already very slow. So you want to make sure you're in B agility when you use an axe. 
Um, if you do want to remodel your gear, just try to get light heavy armor. Um, if you don't, then you'll be in C agility and you'll be very, very slow. Um, skill is at 10, just the soft cap. Dex and uh, magic are at 30 to meet the capacities. Um, as you can see over here, like I said, I am in AA toughness, meaning that it'll be a lot harder for me to be staggered. Paired with 10,000 defense, basically this is a very tanky build. Um, but that's pretty much it right there. Uh, as for the special effects, it's not really much that's like stands out. Um, the build is overall good. My stats are pretty much spread out all over the place. Um, I'm pretty much going to be doing a nice amount of damage while also taking a minimum amount of damage. So um, I hope you guys like the build. Um, before we get into it, I hope I, I ask that you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Um, I appreciate all the, the, the support I've been getting. Um, it's re it really, really means a lot to me. Um, I'm almost at 200 subscribers. Um, it, it like this is really surreal, and I appreciate everyone who's um, subscribed and everyone who watches the videos. Um, and if you aren't subscribed, it, that's okay. Um, maybe you just don't need to. Maybe you don't feel like you need to be subscribed at the moment, and it's perfectly fine with me. Um, give me your feedback. Let me know what's going on. If you do like these videos, make sure that you come back. All right. And uh, I'll be here to make more videos for you guys, make more builds. Uh, we'll, hit, we'll have some fun. So without the further ado, we're going to get into the, uh, the, 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 the fights. And I will see you guys then. All right, guys. So we're back in the stage. If you've seen my videos before, you know exactly what stage this is. If you have not seen my videos before, this is the refined man of the underworld. In my opinion, the best place to test out any build that you make. Um, right now, I'm like level 731, so I'm pretty much going to destroy this anyway. But it's all it's still a good place to test out builds and see uh, where it stacks up. This is Dream of the Neo, so this is the final difficulty. Meaning that um, this is the end of the game. Um, then you go into depths and stuff like that. So uh, as, it, as it stands, before you get to the depths, you have to get to Dream of the Neo first. You want to go through Neat Dream of the Neo first before you go into the depths because the depths gets very, very hard later on inside, like in the lower levels. Um, but let's get into it. Look at that, 50k, sheesh. That's pretty much that. Um, so the build does pretty good damage, and like um, with a with an axe though, since I'm using a hammer, the damage is a little bit lower than it would be if I were to be actually using an axe. Like I said, bladed weapons do more damage than um, blunt weapons. So for example, if I take the fists, there are fists and there are claws. The claws do more overall damage than the regular fists do, but the fists do more key damage than the claws do. So there are there are advantages to using different types of weapons. Um, I I chose the hammer because this can this came with the purity effect on it. So I just end up having to use the hammer. But um, if you want to use an axe, that's perfectly fine. This build works with either one. So um, I'd say just go with which one you think you want to use. But we're gonna go to the next fight. All right, guys. So I decided I'm gonna take on this scroll of the dam. Um, this should be a, a nice uh, test to see how well this build does.
honestly, I, I feel like this build really, like, it's really fun to use. It's not my favorite type of build. Um, I like builds that have a bit more speed. Um, like, this build is fun. It'd be fun to use. If you're an axe, per, if you're an axe user, this would be a very fun build for you, for sure. Um, me, personally, I don't like the axe because, like I said, the moveset is very slow. I like to be able to get in and out, move quickly, um, be able to dash around a lot and stuff. The axe pretty much doesn't allow you to do that. Um, it more so is for you to like tank through hits and just deal a massive amount of damage to the enemy. Basically, who's stronger and who gonna, who's going to die faster. Um, but uh, either way, this build is still very, very good. He caught me.
done. But yeah, Axe is pretty good. Um, like I showed you, the, the moveset is very slow. Um, sometimes you won't even be able to connect with the enemy because you'll get locked into um, animations. Uh, which is really good. That, that's why it's really, really good to learn how to stand switch and cancel certain animations. Um, because, like I said, you will get locked into animations where you won't even hit the enemy and they'll be, you'll be wide open for attack. Um, luckily, this build it has a very high amount of defense and is very tanky. So um, if you are to get caught off guard, more than likely you'll still be able to survive just because of how much damage this build can take. Um, but we'll move to the next one. All right, guys, so I decided to run into the depths. Um, this is not underworld. This is the depths of the underworld, so this is afterwards. Um, it's the early stage, so it's just a preview of um, how this build can do um, in the early stages of the underworld. Um, if you plan on making it and you get it min-maxed out, I'm more than certain that you can take it deeper. Um, but like I said, this is the early stages, so uh, we're going to do this run real quick. done yep and I got a scroll clutch well yeah uh, this build can be viable in the underworld um, as long as you take the time to min max it build it out you know max it out get all the gear you need uh, get all the stuff you need together this build can take you through underworld as well but um, that's going to be the end of the video. Um, thank you guys again for the support. I appreciate you guys stopping by and watching the videos. Uh, keep on coming back. I'll have more videos coming out soon. So uh, stay tuned for that. And again, thank you so much for almost 200 subscribers. Um, it means the world to me. Um, but let's keep it going. All 2021. Let's do it. But uh, it's King Ray Diamonds, and I'm out.